good morning, everybody. Oh, what a day to talk about your Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe their most complete game of the year. Probably their most complete game of the year. Uh, is it a game that now brings the fan base back to the feely goods? That this team is actually okay. You know, they, they, they beat, listen, they beat a team that a lot of people thought was going to give them trouble. I thought it would be a close game. They dominated the game. So let's get through the domination. You know, uh, and I tweeted this as I'm watching the game. It's got to hurt when a star you let get away rips you a new rectum in your own stadium. And that's what Saquon Barkley did to the New York Giants. Uh, and, and the, you know, the, the gate was open when he obviously he went for 55 yards. But he was beasting people all game long. You just know he had some extra incentive. He lowered the shoulder. He was just killing people. He's a big, powerful, fast man. And, and the Giants let that guy get away. I mean, like, it's astounding to me that the Giants have let that guy get away. The Eagles have him. And the Eagles now tailored their attack around him after they had some problems early on in the game. Let's go to number two, Jalen Hurts. Efficient. Not great. The numbers aren't going to be eye-popping, but he was efficient because the running game helped him out. But he threw, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the best pass of his career with that fourth and three dime to A.J. Brown. Uh, That's an amazing throw. Guy's in his face. He's kind of on his back feet. Bam. Makes the delivery. Sacks. Oh, they're back. Fangio using his expertise as a defensive coordinator to fit what the Eagles do best. Sweat stays hot. Jalen Carter. Huff gets involved. And how about N'Kobe Dean springing him in there? Number four, the offensive line. Keeping the Giants at bay after some early woes. Brian Burns was efficient early, but he wasn't efficient from the second half on. Quinion Mitchell. Shackled neighbors. Cooper DeGean. We found our grease man, as they said in Ocean's Eleven. We found our return man. Chocolate and vanilla rookies. And last but not least, and this is where Bill Calarulo comes in, the head coach springing back after a week of turmoil, saying, ah, phenomenal to y'all. I'm a great coach. And Bill, oh, I don't know if anybody... Followed his Twitter yesterday, but Bill was moist. He was absolutely moist over Nick Sirianni. So, Bill, you have the floor. First of all, it it was a big win. I did not expect them to dominate the way that they did. I thought they would win, but to be able to do to the Giants' defense what they did, especially on the ground, was impressive. Without Jordan Maialata and then without your starting right guard for most of that game because Makai Becton leaves with a concussion and now in two games we talk about the defense this team has more sacks in two games 13 than they do in points allowed which is only 12 that is a dominating performance two weeks in a row in a row by your defense but to the head coach you can't deny that the week that this head coach went through could have gone a completely other direction when you are not only being talked about locally but nationally, on every single major broadcast, as a clown, being talked about not only what you did to the fans behind the bench, but then a family man like Nick Sirianni being accused of using his children as a human shield. This was a tough week for Nick Sirianni. Whether you like him or not, you have to acknowledge it was a tough week. And the fact that he was able to put that distraction aside and use it to galvanize the troops and get these players to play for him is impressive. This team, you cannot deny, came out and they played hard from the start. I know they didn't get the first quarter points, but you can't deny that this team played for their head coach. And we're going to learn a lot over the next couple of weeks, but it looks like this team is starting to unite. It's starting to unite, and you can't deny the fact that Nick Sirianni, now 38-19, and 19, with a 667 winning percentage, oh, my God. 14th highest in oh, NFL my history. God. I can't. You this can't gonna, deny it, Mike. This is going to go on. Make it stop, Ray. Please make it stop. This is going to go on, and I, can't, and I have nothing to say. I can't refute it. I will say this, though. It, it, it was pretty brilliant of, of, of Nick Sirianni to, to 
uncover a, an unknown gem like Sa- Saquon Barkley. It, yeah, I mean, it, don't you think that was brilliant, right? And, 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 and the defensive game plan with the, with the defensive coordinator, I, mean, I got to give him credit. We're going out and, and finding Barkley and finding Vic Fangio. What, what do you think, Ray? Hell yeah. That's <laughs> right, baby. That's right. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, you this can't. going to go on all day long. People, I need your help. <laughs> You're gonna, are you going to be supportive of Bill today? Because I got nothing. I can't say, well, he did this in your time. But, uh, you know, I, you're right. Hold you're on. right. They played hard for him in this game. Not only did they play hard for him, we've gotten on him, me included, for some of his decisions on fourth down in the first few weeks of the season. This team goes three for three on fourth down against the Giants. They also go three for three in the red zone. Good thing you had Kellen Moore. <laughs> hey, you can't you can't blame them when they lose and not give them credit when they win, Mike. You can't blame them when they lose if you're not going to give them credit when they win. I got nothing today for you. You are going to be just a pig and slop today. <laughs> I mean, this is unbelievable. Look, don't get me wrong. I I was critical of what Sirianni did. I I still don't like him jawing at the fans last week or him bringing the kids up to the press conference. But you can't deny the fact that he was able to take that distraction and utilize it to his advantage to galvanize this team. This looked like a united team. Now, I'm sure it helped that they were going into MetLife and it was Saquon's revenge game. That all helped. But this team played for their head coach, man. Ray's got nothing either. Look. I mean, you just kind of went the direction I would like to take that conversation. If we're talking like, oh, yeah, they stood up for their head coach. Yeah, they had some other things they were also standing up for in this game. It's, you know, Ray, a division rival. At 5.03. I'm going to show this. To, oh, no, no. You can't see it. At 5.03, <laughs> he sends me a, a little vid of Sirianni's. Like headshot. Oh, Mugging to the camera. Mugging to the camera. No. And underneath it says Coach of the Year. Ah. Uh, <laughs> this is what he, I got at 5.03 p.m., Ray. See, today is the day, though, that I'm not, I don't really want to go after the guy. No, you no. can't. I can't. That's why this is a Bill day. As much but as I, I hate can't let Bill have as the day. As much as I hate it, Bill's, it's Bill's day. <laughs> it's not my day, Mike. It's Nick Sirianni's day. Let's give credit where it's due. So much good. <laughs> All right. So now, this, that, that's just, hey, uh, I'm watching this game, Earl, and you know the people are just dying to be negative because there was hatred for Jalen Hurts early in this game. What's he doing? He's not seeing the field. He, he, and he did miss Saquon in the flat on a really, because he was looking the other way and he didn't anticipate. That was bad. Uh, but. Uh, you know, they, they rallied from it. Like, it was a shaky start for the offense. But with this running game, the way he was running, it, it, it's fuel for him. It made him take off. So, like, that was quickly erased. Again, they didn't score a point in the first quarter, and people were going, I mean, you saw it. Your social media was burning. Yeah, people were ready to jump all over him. What really set the tone, though, was – On that third down check down pass from Hertz to Barkley, where he doesn't get the first down, but he trucks that cornerback, it was like, all right, this is going to be a day for Saquon. I mean, he just ran over that guy like he was a preschooler. Yeah, he he just blasted him. He went low. And, well, he's talking about guys get those kind of powerful legs and and is squatting like 800 pounds, right? That guy had no chance when he got low and he got his leverage on him. Unbelievable. Yeah, so that, listen, it was. It was a pleasure to watch. I mean, it was a dominant. I, the Giants are just, uh, you know, I, of all of those fans up there, I don't know what I have up there. I, I really don't. I mean, that's the, it, you know, they're they're a bad football team. The quarterback is bad. Uh, he had the nerve to blanch after he was pulled. Uh, but, but regardless, that was a really impressive win. And the big question today, and the thing that I want to touch on, um, is this fan base. Does this game bring back the Eagles fans as far last week we talked about well, they're not going anywhere. This is not a team that really is that good, frankly, and they're really not going anywhere. This was an impressive win. You got to put in perspective, of course, with the opponent, but uh, they looked pretty good on both sides of the ball. When they're running the football like that, they're a pretty good team because they they have two unstoppable forces, and one is the wide receiver, uh, and then the other is the running back. And both were engaged yesterday with plays that the other team could not stop. And I think the fan base should be back in on this team. And this kind of flows from what we talked about a lot last week, where I felt that a lot of fans were overreacting 
to the first five games. Because you look at what this team has gone through now, through six games, seven weeks of the season. They've played four games away from Lincoln Financial Field. They had to go to Brazil. Then they had those back-to-back road games against New Orleans and Tampa. Now you're on the road at MetLife Stadium. They've battled injuries when A.J. Brown went down, which is crazy. They're undefeated when A.J. Brown plays, by the way. And I see people, oh, well, the only reason this offense is good is because of Saquon. The only reason this offense is good is because of A.J. Brown. But guess what? They're on your team. So it's okay that the offense is good because of these guys because they're part of the team. So you go through all of those things, the travel, the injuries, all of the change in the offseason that we talked about last week. And to be sitting here now with the Philadelphia Eagles at 4-2, and two, fans should be all in because this is a good thing. This team is building. They just dominated the Giants. Yeah, you could say the Giants' offense is terrible, but the Giants' defense wasn't. And this offense dominated that Giants' defense. This team starting to unite. Yeah, you were all about fans that. should be back in. You were all about that Giants' defense last week. They were a good I, I, defense. I didn't see what you saw. In that, in, that, in that game. So. Well, you saw it early. You, you saw it early yeah. with Brian Burns and Dexter Lawrence able to get after the quarterback. Yeah. It's just you didn't expect a top 10 defense to be able to get dominated like that on the ground. All right, we're going to talk about it via text, via phone. Here's how you get in. It's 610-632-0975. I really like to have a lot of conversations with the people last week who were really down on the Eagles. You might still be down on them. Maybe they didn't convince you. 